I saw a similarity between the baseball swing and the golf swing in terms of what made them great mechanically um, pretty early on in my studying of both actions. And the key move was what I would refer to as the slotting action, uh, where the club head flattens as you start into the downswing, the hands drop a little bit, and uh, it's a very distinct action. I, I spent many years trying to force it in both the golf swing and the baseball swing, and it doesn't really solve uh, the problem. So for many years, I wondered what exactly is going on with that action. If you can't force it, it must be something that's happening internally. Uh, with the firing of your muscles, really the entire structure of the swing. There's something different going on and you can't just look at positions and force them. And that's really the method of the golf industry today. And, uh, and it doesn't work. You know, trying to force positions, trying to force actions in the swing doesn't work. Um, and that's really actually good news because that means change can happen very quickly. You just have to realize a different feel and let me explain what I believe that feel is that basically unlocks the golf swing fixes 95 percent of really the real issue of what is going on in a poor golf swing versus a great golf swing one that produces effortless power consistency and is just obvious and beautiful to the eye I mean we know a great golf swing when we see it and what I've found through years and years of, of looking at it um, is that it has to do with having balance in the swing. By balance, I mean that this energy wave that moves up your body from the ground up. We know that you know, to some degree and in some way, there's a force of energy that moves from the ground up and out into the hands. When this energy waves, wave hits the hips area and it's going up your torso it actually splits into two segments and most people feel so much more of the backside segment the back arm segment and do more of what I would call a back arm dominant swing structure they're they're just feeling more of this energy wave pathway going through the backside and the better ball strikers have more of a, a balance. They, they feel some of the front side too. Again, it's just not in our culture and it's not in human instinct to want to use the front side, I don't think. So most people veer heavily towards the back side. So let's just take a look at what the back side kind of wants to do. This again is, it more wants to brace against the back side and push the hands out towards the ball. That's just tendency. It tends to want to do that. If we look at it from behind, from down the line, you can see it tends to want to take the club head on more of an inside route and then push downward. But here is what the front side wants to do if swinging just on its own. So pick up a small golf club. This is just a small golf club. It gives. That way I'm simulating the a realistic amount of weight that the lead arm has in the swing. And I'm figuring out what it really wants to do. And it wants to do this casted out movement here. And then more of a gathering of energy from the ground up and then slinging at this point. That's just what the lead side tends to want to do on its own. Let's look at what it looks like down the line. This is so much different than what you saw with the back arm working. Look at how it just wants to go to the outside. This is something that, again, in swing instruction, they've been trying to force this move. But you don't have to force it. It feels so unnatural for someone who's backside dominant to just feel the club head working more outside and think that that's going to solve something. You're just trying to put a square peg in a round hole. It's better to feel the lead side. We need to be introduced to the lead side and feel comfortable with the lead side.
the movement that it wants to do. And if you just move the way that you would want to move if you were supplying the most possible force with the lead side, you're going to want to do this more casted out movement. And again, that's why we see better ball strikers have this outside club head at this point. I used to always try to force this movement and I was like, what are they feeling? I can't, I, I literally couldn't even take the club outside. It didn't feel, it felt so foreign. I thought, what is going on here? Clearly, this is communicating something. And now I'm able to, to achieve that movement quite easily. Because I get, oh, I'm just trying to feel more of the lead side. So I'm feeling more of a casted out move. Like I'm, gonna about, I'm about to slap something with this club. You just want to do this, this move. And the club is just coming outside. Just try it yourself. Don't pick up a regular size club though. Because we're really not strong enough in our just our lead arm to do what would be a realistic move. Um, using just our front arm. So again, it's a completely different action. Here you can see the difference between the two actions. Look at the movement of the club is completely different. Yes, it's steeper. It's more going more through my neck on the right and on the left. It's dropping on a very shallow plane. Again, typical of what we see in the better ball strikers. This was, again, another position that I couldn't for the life of me get. I didn't understand how are they dropping it flatter. It's not... I'm even I would even try deliberately to just drop it flatter and I'd look at the video and it wasn't happening. But I got so good at faking it that I actually started dropping it, but so my swing looked good in that way, but it wasn't solving the main problem. So I still had the same swing problems. It didn't help anything out to just force a flatter move here. So what is the answer? So now I go to the range with just about 10 balls. And I start with my left side. And I'm feeling, I'm taking swings with a small club. And I, there I just took two swings. But the main thing I'm feeling here is two points. I'm feeling the club do that more casted out move here so I can flow into this lead arm pathway. And at this point, I'm feeling the lead side pathway move up through my shoulder, through my upper back. So I'm feeling that front humerus compression or the stretch in the upper back, whatever you want to call it. But I'm feeling the energy pathway move through that. And at the same time, just naturally the club head is just going to flatten. And we're going to get that flattening action that we see in all the better ball strikers at your club and all the better ball strikers of all time had a, a, a very deliberate flattening action usually. You'd think of Ben Hogan, Sergio Garcia come to mind. Um, so then I just, I, I did about two swings and I got the feel. And then I just hit balls feeling at this point, as I'm coming up here, I'm feeling that same brushing action, that sweeping action, that casted out action that I took with just the lead arm. I'm feeling the same thing. I'm feeling the lead arm working more here and I'm feeling the lead arm working more as I transition. For many of you guys, you're gonna have to deliberately transfer the the feeling of energy at this point in the swing this is a crucial point as you're feeling more of the lead side pathway move through your front side feel a little bit of gravity take the back side 
People have to learn to use gravity properly in the swing. When you do, you get that whipping action that we see in guys who hit with effortless power. This is a good chance to use that gravity um, and get more of a whipping action. Let your back arm take the force of gravity for a moment by relaxing as much as it can and letting gravity influence it. At the same time, feel that lead side pathway work in here. right-handed swing and again feeling the same thing I want to just feel this beginning action the sweeping action uh, to start and of course swinging with just my lead arm I have to feel more at this point more of that lead side pathway so that's all I'm trying to feel here focusing mainly on that start because if I get that start right especially swinging with just the lead arm, I'm going to get a good feel for the swing. Now the only challenge is I'm just putting it into, into a regular swing now. I'm adding the backside. Two things I'm thinking about is sweeping it back, taking that same backswing mo uh, motion, and then redirecting, feeling the lead side pathway. And that's it. I hit about 10 balls max. I'm looking for the film. I'm going to look at the film later on that night. But there's no use in wasting swings. Um, I'm literally just going in there. I'm not looking to, to ruin my joints by swinging for hours. I'm just going in there gathering some information. And really just having fun feeling that more of the lead side swing. It's a really fluid action when you get it. What's really different since I figured out this lead side pathway is that the balls I hit are not slicing like they used to. I used to always be fighting that balloon slice. And now all the balls I hit have a little bit of a draw on it. Almost all the balls, if not, if not they're straight. But again, what the big problem out there is we have to at least be introduced to what the lead side would want to do on its own and transfer a lot of that energy flow over to the lead side and allow the back arm to just chill out a little bit and when we focus on those two things in particular the start of it and the transition you can really fix your swing like that and I think that that's the way that really 95 percent of swing mechanics needs to be solved in just this simple switch to more of a lead side pathway but don't forget to always hit balls from both sides this is very important to even out your body for health reasons it can also help help in performance you may have to hit a shot lefty we all should really be striving to be great ball strikers from both sides so thank you guys for watching check out my website theswingmechanic.com and i'll see you next time Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was fucking losing my mind. <laughs>